the Zenfone 4. We read your comments and based on your feedback, we've been making a few changes here on C4 eTech. We've decided to tone down the number of devices we cover in favor of bringing you more timely videos. This change also meant that we had to cut a few reviews we had planned and the Zenfone 4 was an unfortunate casualty of this decision. While I mentioned this on an episode of Ash Answers, a lot of you seemed interested in this and wanted a Zenfone 4 review. So you guys wanted it, you got it, this one's for you. But before we get to the review part, if this is your first time here or in case we got cut from your memory, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech and if you do end up liking this video, please hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications and let's now get started. <laughs> Let's start with the built-in design. While the design here looks good, this does happen to be the year of 18s to 9 displays. Asus though haven't pulled off anything that crazy for this one and the good old 16s to 9 panel is what we get here. And while this is a 5.5 inch display, the bezels do feel a tad thicker around the edges and in reality they aren't that bad. Yes, the Zenfone 4 is a little wider than the OnePlus 5 but then again it is narrower than say the Redmi Note 4 or the Nokia 6. The curve back here though doesn't seem to glide into the palm of my hand as it does with other phones and that affects ergonomics quite a bit. That said, both the front and back are covered by 2.5D Gorilla Glass and the phone does look and feel premium thanks to that glass sandwich design. But that also means it does pick up a ton of fingerprints and smudges. Overall though, the build looks good and I can't help but feel that Asus could have or rather should have done better. And for a closer look at the placements, do check out our unboxing video. I'll leave a card here along with a link in the description below. The TLDR version, the earpiece doubles as a second speaker and the output's quite good. We've got a hybrid setup, cellular reception and call quality are fine. Asus have finally figured out what backlit capacitive keys are and the fingerprint scanner works great. Also remember that the 3.5mm headphone jack is present and accounted for here and there is support for high res audio and also DTS Headphone X support for 7.1 virtual surround sound. The output is quite good. So now let's move on to the display. Like I mentioned earlier, we've got a 5.5 inch display here. This is a super IPS plus panel with a full HD resolution so about 400 pixels per inch. The display is rich and bright with excellent viewing angles and the color reproduction is on point. The brightness can go up to 600 nits, so it's easy to use outdoors on sunny days. Underneath the hood, this Zenfone 4 is powered by the new Snapdragon 630 chip. There is also 4 gigs of RAM along with 64 gigs of onboard storage. Even with intense tasks like gaming, the Adreno 508 is quite capable and manages to run most games quite well. Yes, with the most intense of titles, you can expect a few frames drop from time to time and loading times are a fair bit longer too, especially when pitted against phones with an 835 or even an 821 chip. Despite all of this, overall gameplay experience here was quite decent. With day-to-day -day usage tasks, the Zenfone 4 had no issues. And by the way, it is worth noting that there is a 6GB RAM variant with Snapdragon 660 available as well. So, talking about day-to-day -day usage, let's talk software. The Zenfone 4 is running on the latest Zen UI 4.0. We've got Google Cards to the leftmost pane. There's not a lot of bloat, but the apps that are preloaded are mostly uninstallable. And Zen UI 4.0 is built on top of Android 7 Nougat. That means the regular Nougat features like split-screen support that lets you run two apps side by side at the same time as well as quick switch to rapidly jump between the last two apps by double tapping the recent key are both present and accounted for. Asus has their own bunch of tweaks as well, including support for Teams, a mobile manager, and endless home screen customization options. The user experience here was quite good. Apps opened up quick, there wasn't a lot of lag, and the Snapdragon 630 chip also happens to be built on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process. And in case it wasn't clear, the 630 is a direct follow-up to the ever so power efficient 625. So to no one's surprise, the 630 excels with power efficiency here and it manages to get the most out of that 3300 mAh battery packed into this device. So I tested this phone for about a week and on a day of not too intense usage, I managed to end my day with over 40% juice left. And, and even on a day with intense usage where I used the GPS a bit, ran maps, took a bunch of photos and videos, and even on a day like that, I had no issues uh, with the Zenfone 4 getting me through a day, as in uh, I didn't have to plug in till the end of the day. And even on those instances where I had to plug the phone in, 
it could charge back up real fast. The support for fast charging, it can go from zero to 50 in a little over a half an hour. And with that, let's talk cameras. The Zenfone 4 has a dual camera set up to the back. We've got Sony's IMX362 sensor. That's a large 1 by 2.55 inch 12 megapixel sensor, meaning a huge pixel size of 1.4 micron meters. Now that coupled with an f1.8 lens means there's a lot of light to be let in. Under good lighting conditions, the Zenfone 4 captures some amazing pictures. Thanks to Tritec Plus technology, focusing on tiny subjects like this is a walk in the park. The shooting experience was really nice. The resulting images were sharp with a great deal of detail. Look at that water droplet. The color reproduction was excellent. They look very natural. Now this was shot from the same position but with the secondary camera. Yep, it's a wide angle camera similar to the one found on the LG G6 with a 120 degree field of view. The pixel count is down to 8 megapixels and the aperture is relatively narrow at f2.2. See, the images aren't as good as those shot with the primary camera, but they are very much usable and you do get to capture a very wide area in a single frame, so that's excellent. Under low light, the camera does produce great results, but going by the specs, you might expect a little bit more out of this. The images are bright, but there's not a lot of detail. They end up lacking in visual fidelity, resembling kind of oil paintings. This seems to have more to do with the way ASUS processes these images rather than the quality of the sensor itself. That said, this is still one of the best performers in this price range. Another thing worth mentioning is that there is support for a portrait mode. The results look okay. The camera does struggle a bit with edge detection and the blurring also kind of looks unnatural. This camera can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. And like I mentioned earlier, it uses Zenfone's Tritec Plus focusing technology. So focusing is sharp and snappy. The footage is also super stable thanks to four axis optical image stabilization. Apart from dynamic range, which is a tad under the mark, everything about this footage was impressive. It was sharp with a ton of detail and natural colors. There is an 8 megapixel f2.0 camera to the front for selfies and it does its job quite well. The selfies turned out sharp with natural skin tones, the color reproduction was above average. There's even a portrait mode thrown in for selfies. Some of them turned out nice but some weird blemishes did pop up ever too often. The camera interface is quite intuitive and the shutter response is quick. There's a burst mode available too. There is a dedicated pro mode too, comes with the level and everything, you get to tinker around with a lot of manual settings and there's even an option to shoot raw and the icon to the right lets you toggle between both cameras. With that, we now get to the price and this is what I had to say in the unboxing. This variant of the Zenfone 4 is priced at $399, that's about 25,500 rupees. Well, I am excited about all the bells and whistles this phone provides, Snapdragon 630 at this price does seem to be a little bit of a hard sell. But it is just the unboxing and I'm not going to be quick to judge. Let me use the Zenfone 4 for a bit and I'll have more to say in my full review. And now, after having used the Zenfone 4, I still stick to my initial statement. The Zenfone 4 is definitely an exciting phone. But at this price, we are getting too close to flagship territory. Phones like the Honor 8 Pro do offer much better performance. Even something like the Mi 5 outperforms the Zenfone 4 and provides a camera experience that quite close, if not better. And so, as good as a phone as the Zenfone 4 is, it feels like it's priced at least $100 more than it should have been. At $299 or around the 19 20000 rupee mark, this might have been a great choice, but at this price, I really don't see myself recommending it. So there you have it, my two cents on the Zenfone 4. Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And that's it for this review. You know what to do. Vote it down if you hated it. But if you did like it, give it a big huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. If you've already subscribed, hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified each time a new video goes live here on C4 Retech. If you know anyone, friends or family who might be interested in the Zenfone 4, do share this video with them. And I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this year is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye bye.